Have I missed something that all of the crafty world knows? Or have I discovered a new way to ink up stamps all by myself? I'm not sure. Hello crafty friends, Donna here, and I have a pair of cards for you today that highlight an embossing folder. You can find me all over the internet as Donna is playing paper, and also as Donna Doll 74 on Instagram. The hero of today's cards is this 3D embossing folder from Paper Rose Studio called Tufted Elegance. And I'm absolutely in love at the moment with using 3D embossing folders with these shimmer cardstocks from Paper Rose Studio. You can see the gorgeous combination of texture and shine that you get from these. For the first card, I'm going to add a very simple sentiment. This layered hello is available in three different sizes. And I've got the middle size here, which is actually only available in Australia, but it does come as slightly smaller and slightly larger that you can get in various places. And then to that, I'm going to add this extra sentiment from a pack called So Extra Sentiments that are all partial sentiments that are designed to go alongside of a main sentiment. They come in black and white and I'm going to use black today. And then I have a packet of crystals and I'm going to add a crystal to each of those little anchor points. These crystals come in four sizes in this pack and so I've carefully picked out a bunch of the second biggest size and I'm going to attach one to each of these little corners. Except if you have a look in the final photos you'll see that there's one boo-boo. Somewhere along the line, one of these crystals is smaller. I wonder if you can spot it. Once the crystals are all added and that glue is dry, I'm going to attach this panel to a card. And it's quite textured and the cardstock is quite shiny. And so as well as this double-sided tape, I'm just going to add a little pop of glue in each corner and a little bit across the middle just to be doubly sure that it doesn't go anywhere. And that's the first card done. With such a beautiful embossing folder, I didn't feel like it needed anything. You can just see on the bottom corner where one of those glue dots is not quite dry yet. So that's the first card. I'll show you a couple of pictures and perhaps you can spot the mistake. It's not easy to see until you've seen it and then you can't see anything else. For the second card, I'm going to use another color of this shimmer cardstock this time sea mist instead of sea foam which I used for the first card and I'm going to use these vintage labels dies in a couple of sizes don't forget you need to cut the shape first and then emboss it otherwise the cutting process will flatten out all that lovely texture I'm going to use a butterfly from the rainbow butterfly set these have some beautiful clear embossing on them so they really catch the light and then I'm choosing a sentiment from the happy birthday sentiments pack then I decided I'd like to have just a little bit of texture on my background. And so I've used this text background stamp. And as you can see, I'm just inking it all over, tapping the ink on as I usually do. The resulting image was fine, but actually a little bit splotchy. You can see where I tapped harder or softer on that background text stamp. And so the next thing that I did I thought I'd do a sort of secondary pressing. And so what I did, just to make sure that I didn't have any areas with no ink, was I lightly ran my ink pad across that stamp. And then, imagine my surprise when I got the best impression I have ever had. Have a look at how smooth and even this text is. I think I'm onto something, folks. There's the original, and there's the second one. They are completely different. That got me to thinking, I wonder if I can fix this first one. And so I went back again and just lightly rubbed my ink pad over the stamp, put my panel right back in exactly the same corner and re-stamped. And whilst you can see a little bit of variation, it's much smoother. Next I'm going to just ink blend a little bit around the corners. I use one ink blending brush for all of my greens. And you can see that the last green I used was a little bit apple green. Normally I don't worry too much, 
about moving greens often if I'm doing a leaf I don't really care if it's a little bit yellower or a little bit bluer than it was last time but I did want quite a cool green for this card and so I just rubbed off a bit of extra and tapped it onto my ink pad and kept trying that on my scrap paper until I was happy with the colour. You can see that it is still actually a little bit yellower than the text but I'm all good with that. I could have kept cleaning and got it to exactly the colour of the ink but I think a little bit of variation looks good and so I stopped there. Next I'm going to glue down this butterfly and I'm going to put some adhesive with some height, either double sided tape or a few layers of paper would work for this on the outsides but you can see I've left the middle clean. I'm going to then fold that butterfly just a little bit so that the centre of the butterfly can make contact with the paper. Then I'll add some glue to the centre. You could also use double sided tape but I find that glue, although you have to hold it down for a while, in the long run it does give you a stronger bond and it's going to be under a little bit of pressure because those foam dots are going to want to pull it back off the page. Once I've got that glue down I'm going to press it onto my page and just hold it for 20 seconds or so until that glue has dried enough to hold it firmly. And then it's simply a matter of constructing the card. I'll pop up the sentiment with some foam squares, glue all my layers together and the card is done. I hope you've enjoyed these two cards that have this beautiful embossing folder as a little bit more of a highlight rather than just sitting too much in the background. That's all for today. I'll be back soon with some more cards. I can't promise that they'll definitely make it to videos because I'm back at university studying really hard. So make sure you keep an eye on my Instagram, DonnaDoll74 particularly, to see anything new that comes up. Feel free to like and subscribe if you wish to. And I'll be back soon with another card. Bye for now.